Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at and reviewing the Xreal Air glasses and how they play and interact with the Steam Deck. Let me start out by saying that Xreal both provided me the glasses and sponsored this video. I just want to be fully transparent and say that while Xreal has paid for the video and will have the ability to review it before, I will not be pulling any punches in my review. I will only be making adjustments for factual inaccuracies, and I will not be making any changes for anything other than a factual inaccuracy, as it is wholly against my code of ethics. Secondly, you may be thinking that I might be misremembering Nreal, but in actuality, Nreal is being rebranded to Xreal, so I will be referring to them as Xreal throughout this video. Thirdly, for those unfamiliar with the Xreal Airs, they are a set of glasses that project a 130-inch 1080p 60Hz display in front of your eyes. This review will focus almost entirely on the glasses themselves or the experience with the Steam Deck. I was not sent an adapter that would allow the Unreals to connect to an HDMI device, so I'm limited basically to phones or the Steam Deck for this review. And as I have an iPhone, I would need to adapt the lightning plug to HDMI and then adapt that into the Unreal USB-C input. I can't go directly through, which means that I cannot use my iPhone. They did provide me with an Android phone to test with, but I don't want to use anything that I wasn't personally using prior, so I get the clearest review of the device. Lastly, don't forget to like and to subscribe. Next video, I'll be moving back to more standard Steam Deck content, and I have a good feeling you guys aren't going to want to miss some stuff I have planned in the next two months so make sure to hit the subscribe button especially. With that out of the way, let's move on to what comes in the box. In the box is a nice case with several differently sized sets of nose pads, a cable, a lens frame, and a blackout cover. The nose pads are made of good quality silicone and stick well to my nose. The case has room for the glasses, the nose pads, the nose pad replacement tool, and the USB-C cable used to connect the glasses to your device of choice. The cable is 122 centimeters or 4 feet long, and it is a high quality braided cable, with lots of flexibility and a slight bend at one end, making it more comfortable with something behind your head. The lenses cover is nice if you want a more immersive experience, as it blacks out the area behind the projection and really lets you focus on the content. Moving on to a physical overview, the glasses themselves weigh 79 grams, making them a little heavier but still comfortable. They have a thick black frame and are a little chunkier, but not so out of place that you couldn't wear them on the train or something if you wanted to. Each lens has a small prism allowing you to see both through it and also the projection at the same time. Here, if I line it up properly, you might be able to see my hand below, but also my hand over here on a reflection from the prism there. Each arm has a small speaker built in and three settings for angling the glasses on your face. The three nose pieces are differently sized and easily swapped out using the provided tool. Just insert the tool under the current nose piece, then pull it out, and you can swap a new one in. There's a small optical sensor in the nose bridge that'll turn the glasses on when worn or shut them off to save power when not being worn. Lastly, the left arm has a USB-C port on the end and the right arm has two buttons. The short button turns the projection on and off, useful for wearing the glasses like normal and seeing what you're doing, while the long button is actually a rocker switch that changes the brightness of the projection. You may be wondering what this small set of glasses is. Well, as someone with both myopia and an astigmatism, I needed to place an order for these prescription lenses, specifically for the Xreal Airs, after realizing that the screen's projection was incredibly blurry for me. I ordered them from a seller in the EU, and despite the three-week estimated time, I had them in three days. I then attached them using the instructions to this frame that was provided with the Xreal Airs, and now, if I attach them to the glasses, I can use the glasses if they're my own prescription pair. I'm not in contact with the manufacturer of these lenses at all, but the experience was great, so I'll leave a link to them down in the description below. The functionality of the glasses themselves have two modes, what I'll call pass-through and adapter modes. Pass-through mode is very easy. All you need to do is wear the glasses, plug the USB cable into the left arm, and then plug the other end into the deck. You'll see that the deck screen goes black, and if I hold this up, you might be able to see the image. And now you'll have a 130 inch screen right in front of you no matter where you look. 
I've tried the Steam Deck, the PS5, and my MacBook Pro to varying degrees of success. The Steam Deck worked immediately with no issues. The resolution and the refresh rate were automatically selected. The PS5 didn't output despite being capable of display over USB-C, so I assume that we'll need the HDMI adapter for that. My M2 Pro MacBook Pro worked with no issues as well, and a large part of this review was actually typed using the glasses connected to my MacBook. Adapter mode wasn't something I was able to test, as it wasn't something I was sent for review. Regarding the projection itself, I tried recording in a variety of ways, but I wasn't able to get something that felt quite right with my limited equipment. Nothing I do seems to do it justice. As such, I came up with an effect that'll mimic the experience on screen for you guys, with the same screen size and opacity as the glasses themselves. I've also ensured that the image is 1080p in the middle of 4K footage, showing you guys exactly what it'll look like if you're watching on a 4K screen at a comfortable distance. Here's a few samples of how games look overlaid on a picture of my room. And here's how it would look with the blackout attachment added. It's very good at helping you focus on the content. Lastly, I want to say that the projection goes all the way from a very comfortable embedded brightness all the way up to incredibly bright. It's been fairly rainy here since I got the glasses, so I'm not sure how they'll hold up in direct sunlight, but they were very usable in front of my studio light boxes on maximum brightness. Moving on to the speakers, they're fairly small and don't have a great sound. They're definitely serviceable, and I use them for playing several hours of Tears of the Kingdom on my deck but at higher volumes they tend to get muddied and they lack a lot of range. Speaking of sound, I did a few tests with the speakers about 3 centimeters away playing Crab Rave on the deck. Here's how they sound. If you're looking for a truly immersive experience, I definitely recommend a separate set of headphones, either something in-ear or around ear, so they don't compress your ear into the arm of the glasses. Now, let's move on to something a bit more technical, input latency testing. The input latency testing was done by positioning my camera behind one of the lenses as well as I possibly could, booting up Celeste, disabling VSync in-game, and enabling allow tearing in the overlay. Celeste was chosen as it's a very precise game with easy to interpret visuals, and the other settings were chosen to minimize input latency as much as possible. I then recorded at 240 FPS and pressed the jump button 10 times, then measured how many frames of footage it took from the sound and actuation of the button until Madeline jumps on screen. I fed the numbers into my software and averaged each result to come up with an average input latency overall. The glasses had 21.666 milliseconds of input latency compared to the screen of the deck with 19.166 milliseconds of input latency. For reference, I've also included the official dock, and you can see that it's nearly identical to the X-Real Airs. I personally went into the review thinking that the latency would be pretty bad, but I was incredibly pleased when I found out just how snappy everything felt. So how does it feel to actually wear them? As someone with a very large head, I can confidently say that they're fairly comfortable, but the arms are a little bit short so they pinch behind the ears a bit. Putting them on is a little bit of a hassle, but I found the best method is to actually attach the cable first and then put my hair over it. It usually takes about 5 or 10 seconds. The angle adjustments are great, but I found myself needing to use the lowest setting regardless, and that's probably just attributed to my face shape. Aside from those minor issues, I've loved almost every second of using the airs. I've tested them sitting in various positions around the house and even lying in bed, with bed play being much more comfortable than playing regularly since you can have the deck resting in your lap while you lay down. I'd also like to mention that I was extremely skeptical of liking these because I can't stand VR and I get incredibly motion sick. 
This has definitely not been the case with the X-Real Airs. Even while I was playing Tears of the Kingdom on my deck, while my wife was playing Tears of the Kingdom on the TV, and I was watching both games simultaneously. Speaking of my wife, despite wearing a full set of prescription glasses under these, still loved them and was playing with them like a kid in a candy store. I asked her to try them for a few seconds to let me know what she thought, and she ended up stealing my deck for 20 minutes and playing Tears of the Kingdom, while occasionally stating how cool they were. Something that needs to be said is that the accessories included in the box don't allow for charging the deck at the same time as using the airs. Also taking the fact that these drain power into account, battery life while running Elden Ring on deck went from 1 hour and 20 minutes at high settings without the airs, down to 1 hour and 15 minutes with them. I think that including a simple pass-through adapter with power delivery would increase usability by quite a bit, especially with single port devices like the deck or the switch. I tested with six different adapters and hubs that I had laying around, including a very nice USB 3.2 Gen 2 hub with power pass-through, but none of them allowed me to use the glasses while charging the deck. Now that we've gone over most of the technical aspects, let's do a short lightning round of other thoughts I've had. First, it would have been nice if a longer cable was included as well, in case you want to use them for more than a meter away. Second, the action of clipping on the blackout adapter is a little hard to do with the glasses on your face. I'd much prefer a physical clip rather than the tension that it currently uses. Third, having either longer arms or adjustable length arms would go a long way to making these more comfortable on larger heads. As a techie with a desk job that grew up in a house with four other kids, I can see three obvious uses for these. First, you sit at a desk all day and you just need to sit somewhere else or lay on your bed to relax your back afterwards. Second, you have to share the good TV with somebody else in your house and you want your own private screen. Or third, you like cool things and just want to tinker. All of these are completely viable ways to enjoy the glasses and I personally fall into all three categories. If you think of any other additional use cases, please leave a comment down below and let me know what they are. I'm curious what you guys think you could use these for. With all of that said, would I recommend the X-Real Air glasses? At the current price of $379 on Amazon, if you can afford them, if you can think of a good use for them, and if you can afford prescription lenses if you need them, then definitely yes. While these are admittedly the first AR glasses that I've used, I've been having a blast with them and they're actually on my nightstand now. To me, they're super unique and fun to play around with. All right. I hope you all enjoyed my review of the X-Real Airs as much as I have. Thanks to X-Real for sponsoring the video and sending me the glasses to test. Also, thank you to all of my patrons, YouTube donors, and YouTube members for your amazing support. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.